If you're building a game targeting mobile devices, you probably want to optimize the game so it actually runs in mobile devices. So what I got here is a scene, a game that we built in previous episodes, and we're gonna check the frame rate without doing any optimizations. So as for right now, we're running at, wait, let me turn off the V-Sync. We're running at 80 frames per second, and it's basically using all the resources of my computer. To make the measurements a little bit more accurate, I'm using uh, fraps to capture the frame rate of the the game. So as for right now, without doing any optimization in our scene, we are currently hitting 73 frames per second. Let's play, play around a little bit. And it's basically around 70 frames per second. So let's optimize it. So the first thing you want to optimize is probably the occlusion calling. Now you can find occlusion calling uh, in your render drop down list. You can see occlusion calling. Occlusion calling will only work in objects that are marked as static objects. So for example, this terrain is marked as static. So if your terrain object is marked as static, that means that it is ready to bake the occlusion calling. So if you want your uh, occlusion calling to bake, you literally just hit bake. Okay, now the occlusion calling is baked. And we can see the baking taking effect already. So let's hit play and let's see how it actually works. So right now we're visualizing the baked elements of this uh, game. So we'll see that it changes depending on the camera angles. But it obviously doesn't affect the, the gameplay. But still, we're not hitting any uh, higher frame rates. Maybe just a couple of frames, but not nothing too crazy. So let's drive around a little bit. And see, the frame rate is just, just a little bit higher than it was before. So let's keep optimizing our scene. Next thing we want to optimize is these uh, trees. Now these trees are not marked as static objects and are always loaded in the scene regardless of if they are in, in the view camera or not. So let's mark all of them as static objects. Let's also mark this uh, water object as static object and Let's hit bake again. Okay, now it finished baking and let's see the visualization. So if you have your occlusion window selected, it will visualize the occlusion working. So let's have that on and let's see this water plane. This water plane is not being uh, cold because to call it you need separate small objects so if you want this water plane to be cold you want it to chop it into smaller pieces but if we look into the polygon view this water plane is not taking too many polygons so it's not very heavy into the graphical side of things the next thing you want to do is check your vertices when you play your game All right, let's pause the game and see that my vertices are varying from like 800,000 into 1.5 million, then back to 800,000. Okay, that is because it has a reflection probe in it. Now this This reflection probe is set to HDR and the resolution is set to 
256 as default. Now to optimize this, we probably want to check in baked reflections. But if we want to keep our game a little bit more realistic, we want uh, real time. If you want your reflections to work with your frame rate as high as possible, you need to check individual faces and obviously turn down the resolution to like 32 and uncheck HDR. Now if we go back and play, Our frame rate is still at 79, 70, 78, 79, which means it has increased it, but just by a little bit. And that is because in this camera object, I have post-processing. Now this pro post-processing will slow down the game too much. And that is because I'm using ambient occlusion and color grading. These two effects take up a lot of performance. So if we untick them and hit play again, the frame rate is significantly better. Let's drive around a little bit. Now the frame rate hits almost 100 frames per second. Now that is not everything optimized yet. If we want all the frames we can get, we have to disable completely the post-processing and hit play. Now if we disable it completely, the frame rate climbs even higher at 120. Now we can play it obviously. It has basically but there is obviously more we can do to optimize uh, the frame rate in our game if we go back to our player our player object we can see that it has a interior and this interior alone has basically half of the vertices that the entire bodywork has. So if we disable that, and instead of having uh, see-through windows, we can make a new material and make them black. make them a little bit shiny and now we have less vertices and the car doesn't look much different okay so now the maximum vertices hits 1.1 million instead of 1.5 that it was before. Now we can do even more to make our frame rate even higher. Into our model, we can make the reflection probe baked. So let's make it baked. And let's hit play. Now the vehicle doesn't look very realistic but the frame rate is higher and our vertices count is much much lower
Now that that is basically everything you can do into this view. But what you're probably gonna be working with is the quality settings right here. This for now is set to very high or even ultra. Now to really see the difference between these is that modifying these will give you the best, the very best result you can ever want. So right now we're set to ultra which is running at 120 frames per second. And if we, obviously, if we change that to a lower graphics setting, the frame rate will obviously be much, much, much higher. So if we set it to the lowest, graphics will be obviously the highest. Okay, so we went from like 65 or 70 frame rates to almost 200 frames, frame rates per second, frames per second. So that is how you do optimizing in Unity. And also, I want to say one thing for level design. So if you're building a track like this one, and this track is basically just one single object that is not good for the performance what you want to do is make this uh, make this road into little pieces so maybe cut in here and in here and in here so it's little tiny pieces so when you call it the these portions that are not in the camera view will be called and not loaded in the GPU that will help a lot if you're building a video game for mobile devices.